Uh, I'd like to start by just expressing some gratitude this morning. Uh, Abby and, and Kyle, thank you guys so much. I, I, I think I speak for everybody when saying um, this was not the Sunday to watch on Facebook Live. This was the Sunday you should have been here in the sanctuary because Facebook could not capture um, the spirit of worship that you all led us into this morning. Um, and part of it is that family harmony, the three of y'all singing together. Um, that part of it's just the spirit of God moving here. But thank you guys. We have, we have missed hearing you sing, Abby. You come back and visit from Austin anytime you want. Um, this... <coughs> Uh, the second thing I want to say um, before, we, before I really get started with the sermon is thank you to our church family. And I just want you all to know how proud I am of y'all because last week you guys put on an amazing uh, fall festival for our community. We served hundreds of hot dogs um, and had a, hundred, a couple hundred kids come through here. We had, and of those, 30 families who went through and registered, we know there were some that didn't register, but 30 families said that they have no church home. There are just 30 families that don't have any point of connection. And so we are doing some things to follow up with them. Some of you have taken contact cards and you're going to be praying for them this week. And, and I'm going to ask you all about a week from now to write them a letter just to let them know that you've been praying for them. And maybe share your experience of being a part of, of North Orange and what it's meant to you. And encourage them to come and visit. I'm going to write them a letter this week. But all of that, all the potential outreach that we can make and connections we can make with these people are all built on you guys volunteering to serve your community. And so I, I'm just, thank you so much. I am proud to be a part uh, of a church that is willing to do something like that because not every church is, but you are. So uh, I wanted to also ask a question, and this is actually the sermon. What do you say when someone sneezes? Okay. So we have some God bless you, some bless yous. Do it, anybody, any fans of Gesundheit out there? Okay, a couple, a couple of uh, German, uh, German aficionados out there. Okay, um, so yeah, uh, so I, I, I'm kind of torn. Um, God bless you, bless you. You know, uh, Gesundheit. Gesundheit means, and I had to had to Google this. Um, it means it's two words kind of brought together, health, and then an ending height is, is hood, which is say like health hood. Or, or healthiness, and it is, it's a blessing. It is saying, you know, it seems like you're getting sick, and so I am wishing you health. And, and which is the same thing as we're saying when we say bless you, or, or God bless you, is that this, this sneeze, it portends sickness, or, um, you know, in Southeast Texas, often it's just, we'll just say, it's just allergies. Like, that's much better, right? Uh, it's just allergies. I'm not going to do this for a week. I'm going to do this for the next four months. Um, you know, but it, it says that we're going into maybe a season. And you can hear from my voice probably that I am dealing with a, a little a crud right now. Um, <clears throat> but when we hear someone sneeze... We want to give a word of blessing. And there aren't very many occasions in our culture that we just universally say this is a time of blessing. One is before a meal, right? We, we give a blessing or we ask a blessing for, for the food. Um, another is like when someone gets married or they announce that they're, they're engaged. We'll tell a, a man, congratulations, and we say to his wife, best wishes, Right, we don't congratulate her on getting a husband. We, right, we, we congratulate the husband on finding a wife. To the wife, we say good luck. Right, I, I love that. Um, and we also, oftentimes, we will, we will give a blessing when someone has has a baby or they're expecting, and and we will say, you know, that we wish good things for them, or I'm praying for you, those sorts of things. Um, in Jewish culture, they have over the thousands of years developed all kinds of very specific blessings, which are these sort of pre-formulated words that they say to help them express what they are experiencing. For instance, one of them is whenever they, a, a Jewish person wants to give a blessing of seeing the ocean, they will say, blessed are you, our Lord, our God, and King of the universe who made the great sea. Oof. 
I like that one. Another one is that there is one that is often said upon waking every morning, I thank you, living and eternal king, for returning my soul within me. All right. I'm, I'm just like, oh, Lord, let this day, you know, let, let my feet not hurt when they hit the floor, right? But they say, you know, this blessing that you have put this, this breath of life back into me for another day, and I praise you for sending me out into this world today. Over the next few weeks, we are going to be doing a series called the Gratitude Challenge, and our hope is that we can be, as a people, as a church, can grow in gratitude, that we can be more and more thankful for the blessings that we see in our lives. And so I wanted to talk about this morning about a biblical blessing, about what a blessing is and also what it is not. Because there's a couple of false ideas about what a blessing is that that need to be addressed. One idea is that a blessing is some sort of soul power, right? That if if I lay my hands on you and I say that you are blessed, that I have taken some sort of soul solar no that's not the right word Uh, some sort of like spiritual power and i am putting it into you that's that's not what we see in the bible that's simply just not what we see in the bible in fact the only time that we get anything really close to that is that we see that sometimes that the judges receive this sort of special blessing from god but that special blessing from God, it, it takes a lot of different forms. Sometimes it just means they're good with a weapon. Sometimes it means that they're left-handed, right? It, it is not ever seen as some sort of great spiritual authority. The other thing that a blessing isn't is a blessing is not just positive thinking, right? A blessing isn't like just some sort of like positive affirmation that every day I'm going to get up, I'm going to say, I am good enough, I am smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. That is, not, that is not what a blessing is. A blessing isn't just good thoughts. You know, it's not just like sending good vibes out for yourself or for someone else into the universe. That's, that's not a blessing. Both of those miss the mark. And so what is a blessing? I think the clearest picture of a blessing comes in Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6 verse 22 is called Aaron's blessing or the priestly blessing And this is God telling Moses and Aaron how to bless the people, how the priests are to bless the people (coughs) as they are gathered together, as they are moving through the wilderness and into the promised land. So Numbers chapter 6 starts this way in verse 22. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons saying, thus you shall bless the people of Israel, you shall say to them. Now here's the body of the blessing. Verse 24, the Lord bless you and keep you. Verse 25, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Verse 26, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And this is the priestly blessing. It is these three ideas. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And so... What we see here is that a blessing is something that comes from God, right? The scripture tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. A blessing is a good and perfect gift. So blessings come ultimately from God. So it's important that we understand that. So anything that we are going to see and say, I want to bless someone, we have to be able to connect that back to, to God. And if it's a good thing, we probably can connect it back to God. The second thing about a blessing is that God gives blessings that can then be turned and be given by people to other people, right? God, we would say like God has blessed us with financial prosperity. And we have the potential to use that financial prosperity to bless other people financially, We say in this country that we have been given the blessing of freedom and and we have done our best to bless other people in the world, other nations around the world with the blessings of of freedom. And through free market capitalism, the the blessing of prosperity as well. And so we look at blessings and say, yeah, they're from God, but also a blessing can be passed on. In scripture, we see that God blessed, God blessed Abraham And that Abraham blessed Isaac and Isaac Jacob and Jacob his sons, right? But at the same time as that God blessed the first of that line throughout this passing of the covenant with blessing, there is a a God in, in 
God also passing that blessing from generation to generation. Even when Jacob stole the blessing, right, that God still endorses Jacob as the one who will bear the blessing and be the keeper of, or the holder of the covenant of, to be God's people. So a blessing is given by God, but it's also, it is shared with, by people with other people. The third thing is that uh, blessings have a, recognize what God has already done or what has already been done. Note this, this blessing in Numbers chapter 6. It starts by saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. He's talking to people who, who were slaves. And slavery is horrible. Slavery is horrible by itself. But not only was the slavery in Egypt oppressive to, to the Hebrews, but also their slavery included things like, if you have a baby boy born, we're going to throw him in the river. Right? It was horrible. God brought them out of that. He has already blessed them. He has already proven that he keeps them as his people by what he's already done. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yep, he's done it. May his, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. He has done that. He has done that for the children of Israel. And so for them to pass on, for the priest to pass this blessing on to the people of Israel is a recognition of what God has already done. When we bless people, whether it's through our words or through our actions, our blessing needs to carry with it the fact that this is a reflection of what God has already done. This isn't that I've come up with something new. This is I am passing on what God is doing. We have the opportunity here at church um, to bless people financially quite often. One of the things that we do is that if someone is going to a doctor's appointment in Beaumont or, or something or they're just trying to you know, get home from, from some sort of travel, we will go with them down to the gas station and we will fill their tank with gas. And people, and Rusty has dealt with this so many times, people will want to thank us and thank you and thank you. And I've had you know, people hug on me and I'd, and I'd never say, well, yes, yes. All praise, glory, and honor comes to me. No. I don't even say, well, thank the church. No. I say, this gift is coming from God. Right? You know, I mean, he's used our hands to hand it to you. But ultimately, this is from God. And so, you're accountable to God for what you do with this. Not me. I'm not watching. Once I leave this parking lot, our relationship's over. I mean, you might say, oh, yeah, I'll be back there Sunday. But Rusty, look around. I don't, no, they're not here. Um, right? Because that's something people always say, oh, I appreciate this. I'll be there Sunday. I'll see you next month when you need to go visit the doctor. That's fine. Because it's not between you and me. I'm giving you this blessing because God has blessed us with it. And it's, it's from him. So we, we recognize that the blessing has come from God. It's, it, we point back to him. It's a recognition of what he has done. When we give a blessing, we also need to, that blessing needs to be a hope for the future. That blessing needs to carry some sort of, some sense of hope. Because I don't think that God ever gives his people, makes his people a promise that is not hopeful. Right? When he's speaking to his people, the promise of, of, of the Lord is, is always one of hope. That he wants to do good for us. Now, we understand that there may be some, some dark times along that path to what is ultimately good, but God's blessing is one of hope. And so as we bless people, whether it's with our words or our deeds, it should give people hope. Now, earlier I started and I said, when we congratulate someone on getting married, we can say, congratulations, you found a wife. And we say to the bride, best wishes or good luck. Now, that's not very hopeful. It's not very hopeful. No one, no one at a wedding, uh, you know, I've been to several, I've conducted my fair share, and I, I've never seen anyone at a wedding, like during the receiving line as you shake hands with the bride and groom, say, you know, best odds, 50%, you make it. Never seen it. Now, I have heard people say, ooh, I just don't know about these two. Right, kind of behind their back, right? I've never seen anybody sort of say that because, well, we recognize that's not hopeful. 
And so as we, even in that situation with a bride and groom, maybe we should come up with something better than best wishes. Maybe something better than best wishes. Maybe this, maybe congratulations, you have found a partner for life. That is a good thing, young man. That is a good thing. And maybe to his wife or his future wife say, there are gonna be dark times ahead. There may be times when he doesn't pay the light bill and you just have to make dinner in the dark, but stick with it because ultimately marriage is a good thing and the struggle will be worth it. Now that's, that's realistic, but it's also hopeful. I remember someone say, saying something almost like that to Haley and me when we, Haley and me, when we first got married. Basically they said, you two are such a great match. And then they, they listed everything that was wrong with me <laughs> and how Haley was such a great answer for all of the things that were wrong with me. And I just sat there like, can, can we get to the good part that's good for me in this? And the answer was, the part that's good in you for this is that you found this woman. It's like, okay, fair enough, fair enough. So we bless people. And we bless them that recognizing the blessings from God, that we give it from person to person, that it's a recognition of what God has done that has hope for the future, but also a blessing should express an intimate connection, right? In blessing, we recognize an intimate connection. In Numbers chapter six, verse 27, right? After the blessing has been given, this is what the Lord says. So they shall put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. See that blessing, the blessing that comes, it isn't just that God says, here's a blessing, now you go your way and I'll go mine. But he says, in giving this blessing, I am recognizing, I am letting it be known that you are my people. I am making a connection to you. I said, when we give people gas, they say, oh, I'll come back to church. And we recognize that they won't. But every time that we give people gas, I say, listen, this gas will get you a little ways, but I tell you, there is something that we have to give at this church that is so much greater than gas money. You could come back Sunday, and I hope you do. I really hope you do. And you could discover a fellowship of believers here that love each other, that love each other beyond just what we can provide each other with you know, financial resources, but genuinely care about each other. And you can walk through life with a group of people that love each other. Now, this doesn't mean we always get along perfectly. Sometimes we disagree about things. But at the end of the day, we care about each other. You could be a part of that, and, and I hope you will be. Because that blessing that we give, it should be a recognition of at least the potential of an intimate connection. That person that stands in front of Haley and me as we're engaged, saying everything that's wrong with me and every way that she makes up for it, that person knew me, right? You gotta know somebody pretty well to criticize them to their face, right? That person knew me well enough to be able to say the things that they said and they knew her well enough to know how we fit together well. The blessing, it speaks of an, of an intimate connection. It speaks of a, of a closeness. And so as we move into this world, as we move through it and we look to bless people, we should be aware of, of the way of the, the sort of the shape that a blessing ought to take. Now, I want to go to Genesis chapter 2, and I want to look at the first blessing. I feel is the first blessing. Genesis chapters 1 and 2, of course, discuss how God created the world. In chapter 2, verses you know, 5, 6, 7, it, it talks about the buildup to creating man. And in verse 7, it describes the creation of man this way. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. And the picture that it, it makes here is the, of God forming us, and, and Adam, but also by extension, us, that we are formed out of the same carbon base as, as this world, that we're formed that we are made into his image and likeness. We learn in chapter one, we're made in his image and likeness and sort of the sealing moment 
of that, of that connection is that he breathes life into our nostrils. And I, I've always, I, I used to wonder at why nostrils, right? Because when we give CPR, right? You give CPR, at least it used to be this way. I know that it's changed, but it used to be CPR. You pinch their nose closed and you blow into their mouths. Have you ever thought how weird it would be if you did that opposite? Right? That you, you cover somebody's mouth and then you blow in their nose holes? That would be weird. Like, that would be very awkward. The reason they talk about this this way is that if, if this connects with the experience of, of people, especially in ancient times, who were raising cattle or sheep. That if, if a cow or a sheep was born and it was not breathing, that a way to clear their nostrils of all the you know, stuff was to grab them by the nose and to blow into their nostrils to get them to start breathing. And this is the picture that God reached down into the miry yuck of our birth and he breathed into us. That right there, that's an intimate connection. That's a special connection that God made with us from the foundation of human life. And it is, it is that idea of breath. And we see, we see breath as a blessing we see breath as a blessing throughout our lives. That this wasn't just a one-time blessing that God blessed Adam and that every time after that was just sort of nature, but that instead that every birth, that when a person breathes in that first breath, it is a blessing of God. And that every breath that is breathed thereafter is a blessing from God. When Job thinks about this in chapter 24, verse three, he says, as long as breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. He recognizes that every breath is, is a blessing. When Paul talks in Acts chapter 17, verse 27 or 25, he says, He himself, God himself, gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. That every breath for us is a gift. So how we choose to use that blessing is important. How we choose to use that gift of life is important. In, in the Orthodox Church, they have, they call it the, the Jesus Prayer. And on it, they, they breathe in and they say, and I, I may be getting this off a little bit, but it's something like, Oh, Jesus, my Lord and Savior, as they breathe in, which is really hard to do while you're talking into a microphone. Oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, have mercy on me, a sinner. And this is something that they practice to remember that, that their breath is a blessing. In what ways are we using our breath as a blessing? First, do we recognize it as a blessing? I sure hope so. I hope that tomorrow morning when you wake up and you take that first breath while still in bed, you, you breathe in and think, oh, God, thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for another day to be on this planet. I hope that you'll then get up and you'll use that breath in some blessed ways. Here's a couple. One, you can use your breath to send life-affirming messages, right? Now, I know today a lot of the messages we send are with our thumbs, you know, these are this kind with the texts, right? You can use your thumbs that way too. But you can use your breath to send life-affirming messages. You can, you can say a blessing to someone. If you have that a close enough connection, you can give an affirming message. You can give an encouraging message. So right now, think about this. Just, just take a moment. Who can you bless tomorrow? All right. Who could you bless today? Who could you speak some sort of truth? Who could you tell some, something to them that is reflective of what God has done that gives them a hope for the future? Is there somebody in your life that you can, can do that to? I bet there is. So... Who is it? Well, tomorrow morning when you get up and God gives you that first breath, will you use one of those breaths that day to send a blessing 
to send some sort of encouraging message on the breath that God has entrusted to you? There, there are all kinds of blessings that can be given. And some of them are, you know, the things that are born out of your experience. You might give a blessing to a new parent to say, hey, next year of your life is going to be the toughest year of your life. You might give an encouraging word to a young married couple to say, I know it's hard, don't give up. I know it's difficult, don't give up. You can do that. Another really easy way to bless people is to share scripture with them. And sometimes you can share scripture with somebody and you don't even have to let them know that it's scripture, right? You could, you could see that someone who's been given a gift, you can say every good and perfect gift is, comes from the father of light. All right, that's scripture. It's encouraging. It's good. It gives hope. You can see someone who is being generous or maybe struggling to be generous. And you could say, God gives to those who give in equal measure. And he, the Bible even describes it this way, that he gives and he, he fills their bowl and he shakes it so that it settles down and then he pours more on the top until it's heaping over the edge of the bowl into their lap. That's how God gives. So I know you may be struggling to be generous. I know you may find it that you're barely making, you know, your paycheck last to the end of the month. But understand that if you give to God, this is how he gives. You will never outgive him. That's hopeful. It's encouraging. It's true. It's born out of our experience. It's born out of the scriptures. You could say, Lord bless and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. That's a good blessing. It's good. If it was good enough for the priests of Israel, it's good enough for us today as priests walking through this lost and broken world. Just so often, let me say this. The, all of those are positive ways that we can use breath to bless. I think at the same time we have to be careful that we're not using our breath to curse. I read something this week that said, if, if you find your, that your child is being really critical or really you know, negative or not encouraged, not hopeful about the future, look at your own vocabulary. Look at the words that you're saying. Do they hear you complaining about traffic? And that one, that one right there really struck me. It hit me hard, y'all, because I have driven with my kids, you know, in, through Houston, this, you know, through Dallas traffic. And, you know, I've learned, I've done my best to try and keep my mouth shut. Sometimes 18 wheelers, you know, they pull and like this the other day, two 18 wheelers decided they wanted to make a sandwich with me as the, as the meat of it. And, you know, it was hard. A couple of months, I think what really drew this my, the forefront of my thoughts was that not too long ago, we were driving back from, from Lake Charles and somebody flew up the entrance ramp and, and they cut off in front of, cut me off just right in front of me and I had to hit the brakes to not hit rear end them and my daughter, sweet girl, she said, go back to Oklahoma. <laughs> and hey, my wife looked at me and she said, where did she learn that? Maybe me, maybe. But if that's what's coming out of our mouths, that's what's going to come out of their mouths. If that's how we choose to use the blessing of breath, what does that say? What does it say about all of those things? What does that say about our history with God? If we choose to use the blessing of breath, the first blessing that he has given to every one of us, if we choose it to be critical, if we choose it, if we choose to use it to just be grumpy, what does that say about our God? Because if my kids' language is a reflection 
of my language. Am I being a reflection of God? I'm not. I'm being a reflection of other sources that are speaking into my heart and mind. So let's be careful. Because our breath can be used to send affirming, positive, encouraging, hopeful messages. Or it can be used to send destruction. The word is clear when it says that the, the tongue is a small fire that can rage out of control. We can also use our breath in support of efforts to bless people. We can use our breath, well, like last Sunday afternoon. Some of you guys, some of you guys got, got a little hot, got a little sweaty. Some of you guys thought that, you know, your Halloween costume having long sleeves you know, should be a good idea at the end of October. It was a little warm. It was a little warm, right? We got hot and sweaty, and maybe your breath, we were kind of huffing and puffing as we were breaking things down at the end. We used our breath to bless other people, not just with our words, but through what we were doing physically. This week, you could use that breath to gather canned goods to donate to OCS. There are bags around the church. You can take one home, fill it, bring it in. And you can, you know, if you can fill that bag so full that you can't even carry it in, and, and one of us will come out and we'll bring it in for you. And we'll use our breath alongside yours to bless people. You can use your breath to, to volunteer at organizations in this town. You can use your breath to do things here at the church. You can do, use your breath to bless people in a thousand ways. In fact, today, on your way out, I'm going to encourage you to pick up a bingo card. They're, they're on the tables right there behind Kyle and right there on that chair and right over there. And on it, you will find 25 activities of blessing. 25 ways that you can send out gratitude to people or a person in your life. Things like send someone a card. Things like write someone a, a note or find a way to bless a public school teacher, or call up a city employee and tell them thank you. <sighs> call somebody in the water department and tell them thank you. You might bring them to tears because you are likely the first person to tell them thank you in 10 years. So those are there. And you can use your breath, this blessing that God has given you, to pass on blessing to other people. And when we do that, when we do that, we will experience gratitude. We will, oftentimes we'll receive gratitude from others that we can then point to God and say, thank the Lord. And we will feel gratitude that God has put us in a position to bless other people. I like, I like the fact that, that breath is the first blessing that God gives to humanity. I I love that it is the first gift that he gives to every person. Because I remember, as many of you do, the birth of, of your children. And depending on, on when they were born, the, the protocol may have been to, you know, to kind of spank them a little bit, to shake loose all the gunk in their, their lungs. When my kids came along, it was to suction out their, their noses. And I remember with each birth, those few seconds, just a few, between delivery and that first rattly cry and hearing that cry and thanking God. Thanking God for the breath that he had put into those tiny little lungs. Thanking God that, that they were healthy and, and being just so in awe of the fact that God would allow me and Haley to be a part of passing that blessing on to someone else. Because as, as surely as breath is the first blessing that God gives us, it is the last blessing that he takes from us. And what is really amazing is that sometimes even when he takes that last breath away from us. Even that can be a blessing. A year and a half after my last child was born, we, my family gathered around 
to say goodbye to my dad. And, and many of you have experienced this, of standing next to someone as they're taking those final breaths. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking, enough. He was suffering. He had suffered a lot. And I remember thinking, enough. Let this one be the last one. And I remember after he breathed his last breath, I remember thinking, his next one will be with Jesus. That breath, oh, that breath is such a blessing. And we have, we have some left. Let's use them well. Let's use them well. Let's not use them to be critical. Let's not use them to condemn. Let's use them to encourage. Let's use them to lift people up. Let's use those breaths to guide people to the cross of Jesus Christ. So that when they finally take their last breath here, their last breath is a blessing because their next breath is on the other side and their next breath is their first one in eternity. We can use our breath that way. So let's do it. Let's recognize how blessed we really are. And let's pass that blessing on to others. This morning, this morning I've talked about the blessing that comes with being a child of God. And some of you, some of you may not know what the blessing that really is. So this morning we're going to have a time of invitation. If you, if you would like to see, if you'd like to know what it is like to, to be a part of the family of God, if you want to receive the blessing of eternal life, then as, as we begin this invitation, I hope that you'll come, that we can begin a conversation about eternity. Some of you may say that a blessing that you need is to be a part of a church family. And I can say that it has been a blessing to me to be a part of this one. If the Lord is leading you to be a part of this church family, this invitation is for you to come and to join to be a part of North Orange Baptist Church. For most of us, I suspect that, that this invitation for us is a time to reflect and to ask God how we might use those precious breaths, those precious blessings as a way to pass blessing on to other people. Let's pray together. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for it is a blessing that you've given us. We thank you for each and every breath that you give us. Lord, help us to recognize what a blessing we have in just being alive. Lord, I pray that you would help us First, if there's any that doesn't know you here, that doesn't know what it is to be a part of your family, that today you might help them to understand the blessing of eternity. If there's any here that wants the blessing of being a part of a church family, I pray that your spirit would move them today. And Lord, for all of us, I pray that you would help us to use this breath of life, this first and last blessing, to bless others, to go out as ambassadors of your people and to let people know that we are your people, that you have put your hand on us, that we are connected and they'll know it by the way that we love them, by the blessings we pass on. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be here if there's a decision that needs to be made. Come.